Hi, in this video, we'll go about looking at stress in more detail. So is stress really useful and helpful? So the answer is yes and no. The right level of stress is good, but high level of stress and constant stress to the body is not good. So there are many stressors as we saw in the previous video in life. There's stress because of competitiveness, there's stress because of the lifestyle that we live. We're always connected to the internet, always connected to our phones, always reacting to every little news that comes out. Even if that news has no impact on us or we can do nothing about, there's a lot of stress from peer pressure of doing things that we don't want to do. Family stress around meeting expectations, media stress through everything that we see through on social media, on news channels. There's a lack of control in, on external situations that causes a lot of stress. So what happens is we tend to take uh, the path of least resistance, which is we tend to go into a lot of negative behaviors. So if a child at home doesn't feel a sense of belonging or doesn't feel a sense of love, then they go and associate with um, gangs, they go to drugs, they drink, because they've seen their parents relax at home uh, with a little bit of drinking and smoking, overeating, undereating, anger, sulking, whole host of issues that can happen because that's what they have seen. And so, and those are the paths that are least resistance. These are negative behaviors that can happen when the real root cause of those stresses are not taken care of. And that's the reality of life. There are, we are in a 24-7 connected world. How do we deal with it? And all of this has body impact. Our blood pressure is always at elevated level when we are in constant stress. There are hormones secreted in our blood. Our brain is hypervigilant. There are neuron connections that are formed that are not necessary, especially when we are in a state of, where we should be in a stress of state of relaxation. So this chronic stress is what causes a lot of these body issues, causes a lot of mental issues, which allows us to not focus on certain things. We cannot perform at regular levels. So healthy stress is useful, but not the kind of stress that happens that doesn't allow you to perform, that always make you hypervigilant, always make you feel that you're out of control. So the solution in this chapter, which is chapter two, uh, of this book is to model an ideal behavior. So all of our children look up to us and they follow much more of what we do instead of what we tell them. So if we behave in the right way and if we have an ideal behavior of dealing with stress, then the kids will learn it and they'll follow us, they'll copy us. So that's that's one of the key takeaways for me which is model an ideal behavior for dealing with stress in a healthy way. And there are three steps to modeling an ideal behavior. So the first step is to define crisis. So not everything is what causes us to be in a fight or flight mode, right? Our body over hundreds of years has been trained to deal with surviving in a jungle. So when we see a tiger, we run. The same stress happens in our body and the same hormones on our DNA gets secreted in our body when our boss tells us that he's going to fire us. But we don't do anything. We don't run. But the hormones are secreted in our blood and they stay in our blood and they're confused. There's a lot of blood going to the muscles, but we are not running. Our digestive system gets impacted because blood supply to the gut is reduced. Our kidneys supply to blood is reduced. So it typically... 70, 60-70% of blood goes to our gut and our kidneys, but during stress, when we have higher blood pressure, most of this blood goes to our muscles that, are, that enable us to run quickly. And so digestive system is impacted. So the first step, again, is to define crisis. Realistically assess every situation. 99% of the situations are not situations like where we have a real emergency, where we have a car coming at us and that we have to we have to take that turn uh, or dodge that car or when we have a tiger running behind us. 
almost 99% of daily situations can can be assessed as not crisis. So everything that is not crisis should not be dealt with as crisis. And so that's the first step, like define what is truly a crisis. And by us modeling this behavior, we will not be impacted. We will not be stressed out for every situation in life. The second is come up with strategies to address those stresses that cause you stress that are that cause you to panic. Um, the ninety nine percent of those that are not real crises, we need real solutions to handle those problems, and we should come up with routines and habits that allow us to handle those situations with a balanced mind. And the third is we need some sort of relaxation tools. We know that we have built this habit over time of so many stresses in our lives. So we need some way to um, relax so that our body, those those hormones that are secreted in our bloodstream, our elevated level of vigilance, etc., calms down and we are constantly healing our body and mind. So, so the biggest two takeaways is we need to model right behavior to handle stresses and we need to be very careful to not take the path of least resistance. This is what typically happens when when we see, when we are stressed out, we have lack of energy, we tend to take the path of least resistance in everything, like for example, shopping. We'll take those cereals that we have seen maximum advertisements of. We will, we will buy things, we will do things that we have seen most in media or things around us. We should be very, very careful and we'll only have the energy to think about not taking those paths of least resistance if we actually relax ourselves regularly and if we use the tools in our day-to-day -day practice so that we are more and more calmer, more and more relaxed. And so defining a model, defining an ideal behavior in our day-to-day -day lives is a super important tip that helps us deal with stress that is not necessary. Yeah, so those two key takeaways. Avoid getting into negative behaviors that are that that are generally the path of least resistance that are bad for us. Avoid the body impact and model ideal behavior to deal with situations and realistically assess every situation, whether it's a crisis or not. Thanks.